Welcome back to our confirmation prep sessions. This is session four, where we're going to focus on the Holy Spirit. Uh, remember the first session we looked at the problem of evil and what it means to say I reject Satan and all of his empty works. Second session we looked at creation and what it means to say I believe in God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, uh, and how we were created on purpose just like the world. Last time we looked at Jesus uh, and who he is and what he taught and especially what he taught about the Eucharist. And now this time we're going to take a look at the Holy Spirit and dive a little deeper into uh, your Strength Explorer results. So let's start off with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to send your Spirit upon us right now uh, as we begin to, to study just a little bit your Spirit in our lives. Uh, we ask you to please open up our hearts and our minds to be receptive and docile to that Spirit. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So for our scripture reflection, uh, we're going to start in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This is in the New Testament. So if you've got your Bibles at home, you can use that Bible hack. Grab your Bible, divide it in half, take the chunk in your right hand, divide that in half. You're probably in one of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Uh, Ephesians is in the Epistles section. So after the Gospels, you hit the book of Acts. And then from there on, the books of the New Testament are arranged by length, order. So the longest ones first, going down to some of the shortest ones. So Ephesians, you know, after you go through Acts... Uh, you're going to hit uh, Romans and First and Second Corinthians, uh, Galatians, and then you'll hit Ephesians. So we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. Uh, and as has been our practice, I'll read this out loud a couple times, then invite you to hit pause and just kind of reflect on what's the Lord bringing to your attention and ask him why. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, he ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ, so that we may no longer be infants tossed by waves and swept along by every wind of teaching arising from human trickery, from their cunning in the interests of deceitful scheming. Rather, living the truth in love, we should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, with the proper functioning of each part, brings about the body's growth and builds itself up in love. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, He ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ so that we may no longer be infants tossed by waves and swept along by every wind of teaching arising from human trickery, from their cunning in the interests of deceitful scheming. Rather, living the truth in love, we should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament with the proper functioning of each part, brings about the body's growth and builds itself up in love. So I want you to hit pause here and just kind of meditate on what jumped out to you, what image or phrase came to your mind as we read through that, uh, and ask the Lord why he brought that to your attention. You know, it's funny when we read through some of St. Paul's letters, uh, sort of like that one, or you hear them in Mass sometimes, it's just one run-on sentence, <laughs> right? Uh, a lot of that is, is because in Greek, you can have all these subordinate clauses and things like that, uh, and it's, it's perfectly uh, grammatically correct Greek. Uh, someone told me at one point, I haven't verified this, that the letter to the Ephesians is actually one sentence. Um, it's six chapters long, <laughs> but that part we read there, part of that feels like it is one sentence, um, which is why sometimes when you read that, it's a little bit hard to, to grasp what is he saying and where is he going with it. 
So I invite you to, to sit with that a little bit and think about uh, what is the Lord saying to you through that. The big takeaway for me there is the Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts, right? It talks about how he gives gifts. Gifts are given to each one of us, and then it starts to, to delineate some of those gifts. The Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts, and he doesn't just give gifts uh, for no purpose. He gives gifts for a reason, right? And it, it lists kind of three purposes there, to equip us for our mission, right? To equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, to build up the church, the body of Christ, and to help us grow both individually and collectively as the entire body of Christ into maturity. That's the reason the Spirit gives us gifts, to equip us for our mission, to build up the church, and to help us grow individually and collectively. That's what the Holy Spirit is all about. That's the whole reason he gives gifts. And you'll notice this all throughout the Bible if you pay attention to when the Holy Spirit shows up, right? From way back in the Old Testament time of judges, not like a, a, a court judge, but think of like a charismatic military leader, Samson, uh, Deborah, there's a female judge, um, Jephthah, Gideon, all these guys, right? Most of these judges, the, the scriptures say the Spirit rushed upon the judge, and then the judge was able to fulfill their mission to lead God's people, uh, usually in battle. Right? But the Spirit rushes upon them and they fulfill their mission. Think of King David. He's anointed king as a child, and it says the Spirit of God descended upon David and remained with him, and then he was able to fulfill his mission to lead God's people as king. Think in the New Testament, when Gabriel shows up to Mary and says, God's plan for you is to have his child. Are you in? And Mary says, I'm in, but how can this happen? Gabriel's response is, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and the power of the Most High will come upon you. That's how you'll have the ability to, to fulfill your mission, because the Holy Spirit will help you. Jesus Christ himself, at the beginning of his public ministry, he's baptized in the Jordan River by his cousin John the Baptist. And what happens? The Spirit of God descends upon him in the form of a dove. Boom. He starts his mission, his public mission. Same thing happens with the church at Pentecost. That's what we're building up to now. Right at the end of the month, we'll be celebrating Pentecost. The apostles are hovering in the upper room, scared, not sure what to do. Jesus just ascended body and soul into heaven. And now they're like, what are we supposed to do? They hang out in the upper room with Mary. They're praying and the Holy Spirit comes upon them all. And then all of a sudden they all go out and you can't stop them from fulfilling their mission. They just go out telling everybody about Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He equips us for our mission and he sends us out. Grace always builds on nature. God isn't going to ask you to do something that he hasn't already started equipping you for. And he isn't going to equip you for even more. Right, there's this, this fun little phrase out there. Uh, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Right? He's going to call you and he's going to qualify you, but he's not going to call you to something that you're not already built for a little bit. Right? So think about like St. Peter, uh, chief of the apostles, the head of the apostles, the, the head of Jesus' church early on. In a lot of ways, he's a bad choice to lead this organization. Right? He's always sticking his foot in his mouth, he's always saying the wrong thing. Um, right after Jesus tells him, good job, A+, plus, you got it right, very next line he's got to tell him, uh, get behind me, Satan. All right, we're going to take a look at that passage uh, in the next session. All right, Peter's this, uh, he's this very emotional guy, right? He's always, his, his words are jumping out of his mouth before he even realizes what they mean. Lord, I'll never deny you. And then he's, he can't even tell a, a teenage girl, yeah, I'm one of his followers, right? So in a lot of ways, he's a bad choice, but you think about who Peter was and what his natural giftings were. He was a fisherman. He ran a fishing company, a successful one because he had multiple boats, right? So the guy got business. Um, he could lead other people. He could barter. He could understand what motivated people because that's how the ancient world worked, right? Fish didn't just cost, you know, a uh, dollar fifty or you know whatever the, the price might be. Uh, you had to barter with people, right? Oh well, you sell you sell silk. Uh, well, uh, it's worth uh, this much fish is worth this much silk. All right, so he had to barter. So he could he could he understood what made people tick. He had the raw abilities and these these skills that were transferable to the task that Jesus was going to call him to. And when did that transfer happen? Pentecost, when he was confirmed in the Spirit at Pentecost, and then all of a sudden everything clicked, or at least started to click for him, and he was able to fulfill his mission. And this isn't just stuff that happens long ago and far away with saints and stories of folks from the Bible. This happens in my own life all the time, right? When I was sitting in your seat as a confirmation candidate in middle school, I was the shyest dude in the room. <laughs> no joke. I was a straight A student, and when the teacher would ask a question in class, I would get red in the face just thinking about answering the question. <laughs> so I thought at one point, perhaps God might be calling me uh, to at least consider being a priest, but the big thing that I held against him was, there's no way I'm getting up at a pulpit and preaching a sermon every Sunday, not talking in front of people. Spoiler alert, I'm married and I have five kids now, right? God didn't call me to be a priest. But at my confirmation, something changed, and I didn't notice it right away. 
right? The sacrament of confirmation, uh, I, I, I felt something there, but I didn't know really what had changed at that point. So over the next few years, I started noticing God's gifts unfolding in me as he called me into leadership roles and he called me into public speaking roles and things like that. And I started finding out I actually like public speaking. <laughs> uh, and the cherry on top of the whole experience was I was finally starting to work in parishes. Uh, and my high school teacher called me up, uh, Sister Francine, and said, we need a religion teacher. I'd like you to do it. <laughs> I thought, I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to do this. I'm just starting to get comfortable with public speaking. Well, it turns out the Lord gave me a spiritual gift of teaching. Uh, and it wasn't until he called me to be a teacher that he fully drew it out of me. Uh, and I cooperated with that grace. Same thing can happen in your life. It's most cases, it's not going to be an overnight experience. It's going to be a gradual unfolding of who God created you to be. But some of you, uh, it might be the day of your confirmation, the bishop touches your forehead and boom, lights go on and you realize this is, this is why I'm here. This is what I was made to do and I'm going to go do it, All right? But grace builds on nature. God's not going to call you to do something he hasn't already gifted you with or started gifting you with. But we have to develop those talents into strengths because God has a plan for you to play to play out through your strengths, but if we never develop raw talent into a strength, we might totally miss what God's trying to do when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And that's why we utilize the Strength Explorer assessment in these uh, these confirmation prep classes, because it, it's, it's one window into how did God make you? Who did he make you to be? What's the raw stuff there to work with? And how can you develop start developing some of those things into real talents? Because what God wants for you to do with those talents is to inspire others. All right, think about that word inspire. To inspirate is to breathe spirit into, to breathe life into someone else. God wants you to be an inspiration to the people around you, and that's why he made you the way that he made you, so that you can bring life to people around you. Do you want to inspire other people? Uh, do you want to bring life to people around you? Uh, do you want to live a full life? The greatest key to happiness, the greatest way to being happy, is to be who God made you to be. That'll bring life to you, and in the process, it'll bring life to other people. So think about who inspires you, what inspires you, what, what gets you excited. Um, and as you're, as you're going through these discussion questions, a uh, couple, couple points I want to bring out. Number one, um, normally in this session when we're gathered, we ask our candidates to do a little mixer activity, to go around the room. We have, you know, give you name tags, and you write your top three emerging talents on there. And we ask you to go find someone with, the, with one of the talent themes that is the same as yours and one that is different, and just kind of ask them, what do you think about that? What do you like about that? Because if you remember from that Ephesians passage, the whole point is the Holy Spirit gives gifts, but he doesn't give the same gift to everybody. And he does it that, that way on purpose. God doesn't want you to be able to do everything. He wants us collectively to be able to do everything. God did not make well-rounded individuals. He made well-rounded teams, right? We're supposed to rely on each other and be a body. So it's interesting to see what of your, you know, your friends, what are their talents? What are their emerging talents? What, which of theirs are different than yours and which are the same as yours? Uh, and you might be curious to see, this is going to be backwards on your screen, but this is what, a snapshot of your gifts and talents that you all submitted uh, in that form. It's not uh, too dissimilar from other confirmation classes, although they all do look different. You guys are really high in relating. Like half of you, more than half of you, have relating in your, your top three there. That might develop into something that looks like empathy, uh, something that looks like developer, which is more of like a, a, a counselor sort of talent theme. Um, could develop into lots of different things. You're an achieving bunch, you're a competing bunch, and you're a dependable bunch. That's important for us uh, as parents and sponsors to realize our kids have the raw gifts and the raw skills to be dependable. We have to help draw that out of them and develop that, but they've got the gifts, most of them, right? More, almost half of them uh, said that that was in their top three, right? So there's a lot of very good gifts there. We have to develop those. So in these discussion questions, we're going to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to take a look at your strength report. I want you to just pick one of your themes and look at your strength report. And there's some action items there to help develop that raw talent into a real strength. And try to pick one of those action items to work on that this week or this month uh, or maybe just over the summer. Um, and then there's also in the attachments, uh, it looks a little bit different than this, but there's a spiritual growth plan by theme, right? And this is something to help you figure out how did how does God want to talk to you? Because God relates to each of us differently, as different as our fingerprints, right? God speaks to me in certain ways that he doesn't speak to you. And there might be some similarities, but there's going to be a lot of differences. So this will help you figure out what are some ways you might pray. Um, you're thinking about service projects possibly for, uh, for confirmation prep. Um, how might you ap approach a service project 
to help develop your, your talents into a strength. You can do any service project you want, but ideally it's going to be something that helps you figure out how do I use my discoverer talents? How do I use my presence? How do I use my dependability? Um, that's the ideal. You might not be able to do that, but that, uh, that document will help you figure those things out. How, what are some questions you might ponder and pray over? What are some scriptures you might read? Um, how might you approach um, life teen events uh, when we get around to having those again? All right. How might you, you go into these sorts of things to figure out who am I and how did God make me? All right. And then just invite you to talk about who inspires you, what inspires you. Hopefully something about your confirmation saint inspires you and something about your sponsor inspires you. So we'll give you uh, some time here to look at those questions and then we'll see you in the next segment.